What's up, strongest men, women, and children from blocks all around the world? I am my block strongest man, and tonight I have a very special guest for you, founder of Garage Gym Life Media, John Greaves the Third. Ciao, homie. Welcome back to My Block Strongest Man, where we bring strong men into the mainstream by discussing all of the latest strong man events in the greatest analytic detail that you'll find anywhere on YouTube. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe to this channel. Make sure to comment below whether you agree or disagree with my videos. I love the engagement and I respond to every single comment. Now on to today's topic. You start like right now, one of my goals, I told you I don't tell people all my goals. Um, I'm, re I'm recovering from a car accident. I rolled over four times. Oh my! Uh, back, back in October, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, and actually, people tell me how crazy I was for doing the neck bridge. Well, I was like, yeah, but I rolled over four times and I wasn't paralyzed. So there's that. I've yeah. been training my neck since. I mean, because I was a fighter, so I've been training my neck since like 1996. Okay. So anyway, back to the point. Um, but as when I'm recovered from that, one of my goals is to bent press my 100 pound sandbag okay right uh, i don't know if you can see it let me just see if i can turn without destroying everything here it's here over here on the floor there's yep. my sled i was dragging the other day. so there's 150 and then the shorter one is 100 pounds and okay. my plan is to bench press that 100 pound sandbag okay for no other reason than that i want to see if i can do it yeah it's your goal goals yeah, are goals go. that's it goals are goal yeah, I was talking to uh, Aaron Stoney last night and we were talking about goals and I said, you know, how do you feel like you did at Mammoth? And she's like, you have to look at it from the point of view of what was your goal. Like my goal wasn't to be first. My goal was, you know, and such and such. And we go through all yeah. the stuff that you guys should watch when that interview comes out. But like, you know, it's, it's basically yeah. how did you do according to what your goals were? And she was very happy with how she did according to what her goals were. So it's set, you know, setting, setting goals that are meaningful to you. Yeah, and it's also the thing is too that like you you are the one who really knows what you're capable of. Yeah. And so you'll have a combination of people who tell you don't try it because they're afraid you'll get hurt because they mean well. So that actually hinders you. And then you also have people who will I mean they're basically clapping over nothing. They'll say, Oh wow, you did this and to you you're like, man, you know, whatever, you know. And yeah. so both you can't listen to either voice too much because you'll end up kind of handicapping and hinder, hindering yourself. And so for me, I always try to set goals that are just out of reach mm -hmm. because it forces me to stretch. That's why they're out of reach. See what I did there? So yeah, it's, nice. uh, it's like I set a goal that's just out of reach because it forces me to stretch in order to be able to grab it, to be able to achieve it. So I, I think that that's part of the whole athlete thing. And like, and like I said, the thing in the Marines, it's like, I'm like, all right, so I set this goal. It's just out of reach. Well, then – in order to achieve the goal, I kind of have to work backwards from it mentally and say, all right, the kind of person who can do this, what do they look like? How do they eat? What are their habits every day? So somebody who can deadlift 600 pounds, what would his daily routine look like? Mm -hmm. for example? And so then I, and so I'll let me go look at people who deadlift 600 pounds. What do they do? See what I mean? And it's like that. So then that also kind of helps you carve out non-essential stuff from your life. Because if this is really your goal, then you say, all right, well, with somebody who deadlifts 600 pounds, eat Cheetos every night. No, possibly, possibly not. <laughs> and what you do is just go look at all the people who deadlift 600 pounds. Don't look at just one person because yep. you're looking for patterns. Because mm -hmm. right? if you look at one person, it could just be a genetic freak. It could be drugs, it could be anything, right? But you look at patterns and drugs are not, if they all do it, <laughs> Well, that must mean it's a thing to do. You know what yep. I mean? Yeah, point taken because Bobby Thompson recently said on an interview, um, he said, you know, I eat enough, but I don't eat as much as some of the other guys because, like, my stomach can't take it and I'm genetically gifted in certain ways where I don't have to eat as much as other guys. So your point about the pattern is a good point. Right, so you're looking for patterns. And the reason they eat is because they need to have uh, um, enough muscle mass to help support their spine as right. they're doing these things because it's, it's a leverage thing. Right. But right. Right. Like he's saying I'm still an athlete, so I need to make sure that my body is designed athletically to perform well in the thing I want to do. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think that's the best way to look at it. And then there's another um, and then there's also the mobility piece. Right. So it's like 
people talk about mobility all the time and it's like this buzzword. But to me, the whole point of mobility is to make sure that you can go back and train again and also so that you're not destroyed and useless the other 24 hours, 23 hours of the day. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I can bench press whatever or I can I can do an Atlas stone with however much weight, but my wife wants me to walk with her and I can't do it because I'm, you know, I'm built like, you know, 200 pounds of chewed bubble gum because I've allowed myself to be whatever. And so you have to, if you're going to be an athlete, you have to be an athlete. And to me, my, con, you know, I said constituency, like I'm a politician. No, God, save me. From that. <laughs> the people who view us, like I said, I treat you like an athlete who trains at home. And so I'm just like, all right, look, whatever your sport is, you got to ask yourself, how does an athlete who does that sport well look? Right. And right. then you start to do the things that, are involved in it and you eat the way that you're supposed to, whatever that looks like. And you just start looking. It's like you don't even try to get in shape. Your body just, as a general rule, your body looks like what you do with it. Right? So, yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. So that all goes back to the goal, though. It's like, well, okay, if I want to be able to kick somebody in the face again, all right, uh, without having to knock them down first, <laughs> um, like Major Kane <laughs> and knocks them down and kicks them in the face. Without having to do that first, if I want to kick somebody in the face, well, then how do I achieve that ability? Well, people who can keep people in the face stretch. All right, so I got to stretch. All right, yeah. but I also want to be able to squat. So what do I have to do to be able to balance those two goals? And it's, it's just that's just how I kind of carve things out. And I also it helps me carve out non-essentials because I'm always like, well, is this thing I'm doing right now, is this going to help me squat 500 pounds and kick somebody in the face? That's really insightful. Uh well, United States Strongman is strictly amateurs, and that's one of the reasons why I love doing it, because these are the potentially the next generation of stars who are just now discovering the sport. Speaking of the next generation of stars, I actually was done with my questions, but you just reminded me of something I'd like to ask you. Um, who was your biggest surprise at Mammoth? Like, not that you didn't think they would do well, but just they they overperformed or you were pleasantly surprised with. Was it Gabby Burkholzer? Is that how you say her name? Burkholzer? Yeah. I knew she was going to do well, but she looked when she did the um, when she did the her press, she looked like she could have done reps with it. So I interviewed Gabby Bergholzer, and I will tell you, she told me she had more in the tank even after the third. She said she jokingly asked David if she could have a fourth attempt. I'm telling you, like she looked, I, so I, because <laughs> again, this is a world record, right? Yep. So you, and then you see like some of the other things like the sandbag and how heavy this is and that are, right? Like, okay, great. But then you see her go, this is a, again, just, just think about like world record. Sometimes people say world record, they just kind of throw it out there. What this means is no human being in history has ever done this. And she picked it up and looked like she could have done more. I, I want to make this clear to the audience. I took out my calculator and did the math. She broke the old record by 23%. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was like. Th think about that for a minute. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's um. So that was the, the biggest thing for me. I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, some of the other people who competed there, I was just like, like Grant Higa, I expect him to do well because I'm familiar with Grant. He's an awesome dude. Yeah. And, um, even though he's not a home gym owner, I told him that's the only thing that's wrong with you. you train <laughs> but he, he trains. Um, he actually works as a trainer for a company. And so he okay. trains in their gym. But I was just like, that's the only thing that's wrong with you. You don't have a home gym. But that's fine. Grant, Grant is cool people. Um, and so I just expect him to do well. You know, he's an animal athlete. So um, he's always in the animal cage. And we said all the time, like, man, Grant has a tremendous engine. So I expect him. It's that's what's so impressive about him is like he'll he's strong at the beginning of the event and he's still strong three hours later. You're like, yeah. that dude, I mean, I wouldn't even thumb wrestle him. OK, he's that. Yeah, he's just impressive to me. You could see that on the stream when you watched him perform. For me, I would say not um, surprising in terms of her, her prep looked awesome, but just because of her backstory, Katie Rogers. So she Katie, was a yeah. uh, uh, novice heavyweight women. So she, it was her first competition. She won it, won first place, and she broke her leg six months before. So she yeah, had yeah. just finished recovering from a broken leg, had only picked up strongman implements like three weeks before the competition yeah. and, and won her uh, division. So for me, that was the big, the biggie. She's definitely somebody to keep an eye on. Um, she does have a training partner. And actually she trains in a home gym um, from what I could tell. Um, 
because I asked her about it on Instagram. I said, is this your home gym? It's somebody's garage. So, so, was, so her training partner is like one of my favorites, such a sweetheart, Alila Worley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like, yeah. okay, it's this is somebody's garage. Uh, you yeah. know, you start, you can kind of tell. And I was like, oh, okay, you got officially, I'm a fan just because, you know, I, I'm all about home gym culture, right? And so anyway, my point is, that I was watching because of that, I paid special attention to your interview with her. And so I was really impressed by, cause you know, they're eating, <laughs> waiting for the food to show up and yep. she talked about like what she did uh, going into it and her goals for the future. And all. I said, yeah, this is somebody to keep an eye on. Yeah. Yeah. Lila won her division too. And then uh, I saw on Instagram, like people were congratulating Katie. And, and uh, if you watch my whole interview, they end up saying like, she can't compete novice anymore now that yeah, she's yeah. won her division. So she's yeah, like, yeah. oh, crap, now I have to compete against Alila. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, I mean, you know, it works out because you you never know. One thing is you never know. There's something to be said for taking first and second, you know. Yeah, like, there we show, is. We're going to fly over here, and we showed up, and I guess now y'all get to just figure out who's going to be third because we got first and second. Yeah, that's, that's true. You, it ends up making you um, both better. Like Michael sure. Jordan would never have been as great as he was without Scottie Pippen there pushing him. And sure. Scottie Pippen would never have come close to what he was if Michael Jordan didn't exist because he, Michael Jordan showed him what was possible. Yep, that's true. That's true. Go, yeah, man. Shaq busts Pippen's chops over that all the time. Oh, that was an angel. My brain. <laughs> yeah. Usually kind of the way I wrap these up and uh, what I want to do now is you you touched upon a couple of events, exciting stuff you have coming up in the near future. Why don't you talk a little bit about take a few minutes to promote, uh, you know, all the great things you have coming up and uh, how people can follow them and follow you and just kind of promote everything you have going on. Okay, cool. Uh, So I appreciate that. We also have the Central Georgia Strongest Man for 2021. That's coming up on March 27th, and that's going to be a good time. Again, we were unfortunately not able to live stream the 2020 because it was canceled, but we're going to, we're back with them. The the event is happening and we are going to live stream the um, Central Georgia Strongest Man, March 27th. That's going to be a very good time. I actually asked Jamie Wilson if he's going to compete there and he's considering it. So that's an opportunity to see him compete again. I'm I'm really looking forward to that. and then this is a very, very exciting opportunity for me. This will be the second time we're doing this. We're doing a virtual raw powerlifting open competition. Mm-hmm. And what that means is we're doing the competition on Zoom, but we're live streaming the event. Okay. So the last time we did it, I mean, remember, these are novice powerlifters. These are not people who are really have a lot of experience on the platform. These are people who are just doing it for the first time. They want to get the experience of competing see what it's like to have judges call out commands, see what it's like to have judges uh, judge your lift. Uh, But you don't have to leave your house. I mean, well, technically you can do it wherever you want once you got a good internet connection and you can get Zoom there. But most of the people who competed, competed from their homes. So they competed in their garage, their basement, whatever. And we've got people signing up from the, the UK. We've already got at least one person signing up from the UK got people from Canada, got people obviously from the United States. And the beauty of it is unlike other online competitions, you're actually gonna find out who won the same day that the competition happens. So you're not sending in your video, then having them judge it and then tell you later on. Um, The downside is you don't get to film your lifts over the course of a week and then send them all in. But the upside is you compete in one day against people from all around the world and you find out that same day whether you won or not, and you're going to get cool prizes. We've got the makers of the vice, uh, which is the absolute, in my opinion, best way to tighten up a, a single or double prong uh, buckle belt. Mm-hmm. That that's going to be up for offer. We've got the people from Bear Steel Equipment. They're going to be offering up a prize, and we've got some other sponsors that are giving out cool stuff. So um, basically, you compete, and if you win, you're going to get a cool piece of equipment, especially if you're home gym owner, like right now stuff is on back order a lot. You're going to get something for free just because you signed up to compete in this event. Um, And it's, it's one of the things that it's historic because no other competitions are run this way. And so we're really, really excited about it. Like I said, this will be the second one ever in history, powerlifting meet on zoom. Um, And so you can actually sign up for that. I'll give you the link so that you can put the link in the description for this video. For sure. 
Yeah, I was just going to ask you, shoot me over the, the uh, links for all three of them. I'll be yeah. happy to put them in the descriptions. And uh, you know me, I'll use my big mouth to help promote oh. you. Man, I really do appreciate it. And I mean, I want to see you in that Central Georgia Strongest Man live stream. Um, in fact, if we could even come up with a way for you to be present, even with Zoom or something like that, uh, so you could do color commentary with me, an analysis, I mean. That would be awesome. Yeah, let's talk about that. That would be awesome. You work out something like Because I think you, it'll, it'll be a good time and it'll be a great way to actually in, make this um, – not only get you, you know get your name out there even more because I want I think you're doing a great thing with your channel and I want you to I appreciate that, but also like I said it would improve the quality of our streams so um, I, I think that's a good thing so that's it that's yeah I appreciate that is that uh, men only or women as well which one uh, Central Georgia for competitors no no it's it's uh, co-ed oh good good yeah cool. anyway, yeah, yeah. Uh, men women masters. I got to see if there's uh, any of the women that I've recently made friends with after Mammoth. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, and that's what are really cool. So I don't know if people really even care about this, but so Strongman Corporation, the, the, um, they have a pro division, right? So you've got professional strongmen in, in Strongman Corporation. They do go do World's Strongest Man. They do Giants Live. They do all these things, right? Mm -hmm. um, the United States Strongman is strictly amateurs. So they do have nationals, but it's strictly amateurs. Okay. And so that's one of the beauties of it. You get to see a lot of people who are just getting into the sport of strongman. And so what I like about USS is you have a lot of people who are doing it for the first time and they're actually helping the sport grow at the base. And then those people, after they get their foot dipped in the water, are like, oh, I love this. And then a lot of them will then maybe two, three competitions in, will go do a strongman corporation event. And that's how you end up having more people join the professional ranks Right. Because even though Strongman Corporation has an amateur division as well, it's intimidating to think that you're competing in the same organization as Brian Shaw. Yeah, it you're is. You're not competing against him. You're an amateur. He's not. But it's still the idea that you're competing against Brian Shaw, Eddie Hall, whatever. This is the same. That's what people's minds are like. That This is the same federate organization as those guys, Hafthor Bjornsson. I don't know about that. Right. Well, United States Strongman is strictly amateurs. And that's one of the reasons why I love doing it, because these are the potentially the next generation of stars. Yeah, well, I mean, we talked about a lot of great stuff tonight. This has been an awesome conversation, John. I'm so happy you were able to come on. Anything else you wanted to uh, mention before we wrap it up? Just uh, we're also um, revamping our, our blog. We're starting to pump out content there. So every Wednesday you're going to get not only um, – an article that's going to help you with your training, but also you're going to get stuff. Uh, we're trying to put out things, just letting people know what the, you know, what's in stock. Cause I know people are still trying to get equipment. So what's right. in stock that we know about that's out there. Um, we get also like what some cool product that's kind of caught our eye. Like, Oh yeah, look at this thing. This is kind of cool. So like um, stuff like that. Um, uh, so that's every Wednesday. You want to check out garage and we're going to create a, a way for you to subscribe free, subscribe for free. And you'll get a notification. You'll get like a little newsletter and it'll say, Hey, like this is what is coming, you know, what we have uh, for you on the blog, but all in all, just, you know, subscribe to uh, our YouTube channel. The reason for that, honestly, is it just helps us live stream more. And the reason why in a nutshell is because when I approach an advertiser to help cover the cost, to like help me cover the cost of paying my people to go do a live stream, um, the first thing they look at is how many subscribers I have on YouTube because they want to know if they should take me seriously or if I'm just some dude, you know, with a cell phone trying to live stream stuff with my phone. And the more subscribers I have, the more legitimacy it gives me in the eyes of an advertiser, right? Um, Absolutely. And so that just helps a lot. And honestly, mm -hmm. I think that the content that we have on there, as I said, it's like ESPN for home gyms. And I think that if you go in our, our channel, I think it really is worth your while because we're tailoring content to you in a way that's never been done for home gym owners before. All right. That's uh that's a great message. One that I'm happy to keep spreading uh, on your behalf. And uh, again, it was awesome to have you on maybe uh, after some of these events, we catch up again sometime and uh, definitely hit me up for that collab on central Georgia. Yes, indeed. We definitely will do it. We, uh, I'll give you a shout uh, in a couple of weeks and actually I'll give, yeah, I'll give you a shot in a couple of weeks and we can hash out something. All right. Well, thanks again, man. Uh, have a great evening and we'll talk again soon. Ciao, homie. Ciao, homie. <laughs> <laughs>
So if you like this video and haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing using that button right there. And also stay tuned for some other videos that you might love blooping up right there. This one is the one that YouTube thinks that you will like the best. And this one is the one that I think you will like the best. As always, share this with everyone. And until next time, ciao, homie.